if you're a friend of God and you're in this family, you've got friends next to you because we're all part of the body of Christ. Come on, we're not, we not to do life alone. Yeah. Ephesians 2 verse 19 it says, you are no longer strangers to God. You're no longer foreigners or orphans to heaven, but you are members of God's very own family. You are citizens of God's country. And what does it say? And you belong. Someone say, I belong. Where do you belong? In God's household with every other Christian. Yes. And so we have relationships. When we go through difficulties, come on, we can be there for one another and support one another. We have a safety net. Come on, when we're not around, people are looking out, where you been? Not because they're trying to be a busybody, because you're missed. Yeah. Because we're concerned. If someone's sick, let's pray for them. If someone's going through something, let's help them. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. And so... A Christian is not just a believer. A Christian is a belonger. Yes. Come on, someone say, I'm a belonger. Yes. Where do we belong? We belong in the household of God with other believers, with other Christians. And so we all need fellowship. That's why God gave us a family. We may not have a perfect family, but at home we have our family. In school, what do we have? We have our cliques. Sometimes we don't like cliques, but come on, the, the jocks hang out with the jocks. And they talk football all the time in sports. Come on. Some of y'all were drunk. The nerds hang out with the nerds. Yeah. Come on, don't, don't pick on the nerds. They're your bosses now. Come on, they graduate. <laughs> you know, they were the smart ones. They applied themselves. God, and now they're the ones in management and everyone else works for them. Come on. And so we have different ones. We have the different groups and I don't know what they call them now. They have all different groups. But in school that we have our groups. In our army, we have our platoon. We have our unit that we belong and no man's left behind. Come on, we're gonna be there. We're gonna look out for our brothers. We got each other's back. Come on, let's not be those that shoot each other with friendly fire in the church. And come on, well, I, I'm just looking for every devil and every person. Well, get the devils out of your own life before you're looking at other people's lives. Well, they, that person has an attitude. Well, they got a splinter in your eye. Jesus said, if you got a log in your eye, get the log out of your eye. Come on, I got enough time. It takes enough time looking out for my own life, my own family. I'm not going to be a busy body. Are you here? And so we, we need to, be, to have that. In the church, it's our connect groups. Yes. If you're not in a connect group, get connected. As we're growing larger through our Sunday services, and we're growing. And we have two services. We're going to fill up this service. We're going to start another service. Come on. Yes. So get excited about that. That's called growing. When you're alive, you grow. Are you alive? Yes. Come on. That's our church name. we got to grow. But as we grow larger, we grow smaller through our connect groups where everyone has a group of people, 12 to 20 people that we can be there for and look out for and, and pray for one another and, and, and get activated and grow together. Can you say amen? amen? We can be thankful for our church community, for a live church. Number two, we can be thankful for God's blessings in our lives. Amen. And I'm not just talking about financial blessings. Actually, financial blessings are the lowest realm of blessing. Are you here? Because what is God wanting to do? He wants to provide for us, but he brings protection to us. He brings promotion to us. He's got promises in our life to be in health and prosper as our soul uh, prospers in every area of our life. It, it has to do with finances too, but it's not just about that. That's one of the ways he prospers us, but we prosper as our soul prospers. You can be happy even when you got nothing. Are you here? And we have no reason not to be happy here in America. You look at the world, and much of the world is way below the poverty line. Come on, people are eating rice, and they're eating, and they don't have, they didn't get to have our Thanksgiving. When I look at our Thanksgiving meal, we're still eating on it three days later. Leftovers. We're prosperous. We're thankful. Do we have our struggles? Yes. But we're so blessed. We can be thankful. We have a roof over our head and hot water. And, and things like, you know, and... And, 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 you know, my, my mom used to always tell me, you know, you better, better eat your food because people in India or people in some other country, they don't have the, uh, enough food. And I was thinking, how's that going to help them if I don't eat it? But, you know, <laughs> but be, what was the principle? Be thankful. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. There's people that are a lot less, for even here in America. Yeah. You know, we, we, we had a, our, our outreach, our gobble outreach and give a gobble. Yeah. All right, got it right. <laughs> give a gobble. I keep gobble, give a good gobble, give a gobble. And what are we, we're helping families that have kids and people came and I could see when they came, many of them are shamed. They come and they're getting out of the car and they feel bad taking something. But come on, we want to bless and freely give because we're blessed. And come on, give yourself a big hand. The whole church coming together and helping people. 
That's all we can give to someone else. We need to be thankful for what we have. Are you here? Be thankful for his blessings. Deuteronomy 8 verse 10 says, When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given to you. Beware that you not forget the Lord your God. That's why David said, forget not his benefits. Why? Because when we forget God, we start forgetting his commandments. We start forgetting his judgments. We start forgetting his statutes. And what happens when we start doing that? I love, you know, what I was saying, Amanda was talking about the devourer comes in. It's not the, that God puts us on a curse, but what happens? We get out in the place where we're out there with the things and touching the things we shouldn't be touching, and it comes in and it devours us. Come on, we need to have gratitude, amen? 